Hey everyone, Robert here, author of Expansion Mastery, The Practical Guide to Living a Fully Engaged Life. Are you ready to start living life to the fullest? Are you ready and willing to transform yourself and your life from ordinary to extraordinary? Then what are we waiting for? Let's get to it. Welcome, my friends, to The Fully Engaged Life. Welcome back to the show, everyone. Here we go. I would like to discuss a topic that will lead you much closer to living a fully engaged life. Indeed, it will actually get to the heart of what it is to live fully engaged. Because living a fully engaged life requires us to hold a higher state of awareness, a higher state of being. Now, I'll define that as I'm referring to it here a little later. But for now, what we have to understand is that in order to accomplish the attainment of a higher state of conscious awareness, we need to walk a spiritual path. Our life must contain a spiritual component at the center of it. This sense of spirituality must, and yes, I'm saying must, be authentic. Just making something up and choosing to believe it in order to satisfy the ego is obviously not real spirituality. Too many people today falsely believe that they can just make something up, label it in their own mind as spiritual because it's spiritual to them, and that they're being spiritual in their own way. Can you see how this is just pure ego? This is greatly misguided and indicates the twisted rationale of an ego-dominated mind. Now, allow me to explain this a little more clearly for everyone. There are many false paths of spirituality out there, and very few true paths. We can observe this for ourselves and know it is a truth just by looking around the world at the amount of truly awakened human beings that are on the planet at this time. If you have a decent understanding for what the term awakening is referring to, I'm sure you can count them on one hand with a finger or two left over. So, our task is to find a spiritual path offering authentic practices for us to follow. This is in direct contrast to making up something and calling it spirituality, right? or following one of the fake paths. It's finding something that's tried and true and has a proven track record for hundreds of years or even thousands of years. It isn't until this point, once we arrive here at this particular point, this is where we can engage the idea of individuality. We participate in the practices but we'll have our own unique experience with those practices, at least to some degree. There are parameters. But this is where the notion of doing it your way comes in. True spirituality is experience-based, and each of us will have our own unique experience with the material. See the difference between making something up and having your own genuine experience with an authentic practice? Seems fairly evident, I know. But today, as the ego continues to inflate to unsustainable levels within the minds of the masses, the ego fabricates the false belief that spirituality is whatever they decide it is to them. This is why it's important not to believe everything we think. This is also why we have to be cautious of any path that we follow that contains dogma. 
Why? Because dogma prevents us from having our own unique experience with the material. And it is laying out a guideline for us to follow and telling us that we are to have this particular experience. And that experience is always one that is man-made. That's something we need to be aware of. And this is why I present authentic practices without any dogma associated with them. So you are getting authentic, real spiritual practices, but you are free to engage those practices and have your own unique experience with them. This is the heart of true spirituality. Now, real spiritual practices were designed to guide you into higher states of consciousness, not into certain types of behavior or mental patterns that they deem appropriate. They were to take you directly into higher states of consciousness. The ability to cultivate these higher states of consciousness are necessary for real progress on the spiritual path. When you mindfully engage in authentic spiritual practices, you quickly realize whether or not the practices are capable of producing those higher states of consciousness or whether they are not. So let me put this very clearly for you. If you are engaged in practices that are not leading you into higher states of consciousness, then they are not spiritual practices. So there are many worthwhile practices on the spiritual path that are not geared towards taking us into a higher state of consciousness, but allowing us to engage the experiencing that is going on as we live in a much more vibrant way. So sometimes we'll do movement exercises. Sometimes we'll do meditative practices for our physical health, things like that. So they may not be spiritual in nature per se, but they help with our quality of the overall experience. But if we're looking for things that are truly spiritual in nature, then at their core, they will have the ability to elevate us to higher states of consciousness. Let's break this down a little bit more. In our ordinary mental state, that is to say, the state of gross awareness, the mind is aware of things such as our thoughts, our emotions, our physical sensations, right? There's also a basic conscious awareness for where we are in space and for the objects around us perceived through the physical senses. But these are all lower states of consciousness. And even though our pure conscious awareness, our essence, the highest state of consciousness is still present, it is ever present, we're unable to distinguish it from the mental thought patterns and mental formations running rampant through our mind. We identify with those thought patterns and formations as self ignoring our true essence, which is right there. It is the spiritual path that provides a mean in which the practitioner can shift from being in this ordinary, gross, low state of awareness to attaining the ability to perceive more subtle states of awareness. As the mental chatter shifts into the background and your conscious awareness rises to a more prominent position within your being, eventually, through the consistent engagement of authentic practices, the practitioner arrives at a higher state of consciousness. Now, this higher state of consciousness, and they will go through many levels of this. These are called minor awakenings. Each time that we attain a slightly higher state of consciousness, it is an awakening. This is what they mean by awakening, right? Awakening is to be in a higher state of consciousness. And then, of course, full awakening To be in our highest state of consciousness is the fully integrated realization of pure conscious awareness 
itself. This realization is not an analytical understanding any more than it is a philosophical or theoretical understanding. It is the wisdom attained only through the experiential nature of the practices that leads to this form of realization. Realization here is wisdom, not knowing, but wisdom. You see, we come to realize it not through thought, not through analyzation, not through rationalization, but through some deep sense or feeling. Now, generally, in the beginning, the practitioner may not have a sense of clarity for whether or not the practice itself is capable of elevating them to higher states of consciousness. But it'll become evident very quickly. And once you understand this, it's easy to begin gauging the potential of any given practice. For instance, meditation... Not meditative practices, but meditation itself, in its pure form, offers unlimited potential for elevating you to higher states of consciousness. However, it's common for the beginner to have a hit or miss type of experience when they meditate, or even engage in a meditative practice. By this, what I mean is that the practitioner performs a practice and they may have a minor sense of awakening after performing it uh, over time. And other times, even after that, they'll continue to struggle. So sometimes they'll have uh, some type of awakening occur. Other times they're struggling. Other times it's just kind of a, a neutral experience. This is natural, and it's the reason that consistency is stressed so heavily in any authentic practice. Then, when we repeatedly engage in these practices over time, the fleeting states of higher consciousness that come and go depending on the day will start to become more often. It'll become your normal state of being, your normal level of consciousness. For this to happen, you need the utmost sense of devotion to the practices. And you need to hold the intention to be with the practice itself instead of focusing on the result that you so desperately desire. The way it works is a bit like this. These higher states of consciousness only seem to arrive when you're completely dedicated to the practice, but not trying very hard. It's in that moment that it surprises you. It seems to almost always sneak up on you and surprise you. This then causes a very real sense of change in your being, in your sense of self. See, it is the experience itself with the practice, your unique experience, that causes, that that stimulates and cultivates this change in you. Without this experience... Just by thinking about it, there is no change that can ever take place. So you get the idea, right? We want to be able to engage these practices with a sense of deep devotion. We want to be able to just be with the practice, enjoy the practice for the practice itself, because that's when we are relaxed enough to allow the transformation to take place. That's when these awakenings take place. So what exactly is this higher state of consciousness I'm talking about? What am I referring to? Well, higher states of consciousness are directly related to higher vibrational frequencies. A high vibration speaks to the quality of the energy of the practitioner. And the higher the vibrational frequency, the higher state of awareness that has been attained. Our essence, our pure conscious awareness, is vibrating energy in a universal field. As the practitioner arrives at higher states of consciousness, they leave behind the connection to the mind and ego in favor of reconnecting to their original state, their true essence, conscious awareness. As this happens, we attain various states of 
increased consciousness, taking us ever closer to being that which we truly are. We are able to reconnect to that which we truly are, our essence, our conscious awareness, through the practices as our vibration rises. Our vibration then is in a frequency match to that which we truly are. See, we we reconnect to that. Even though we're experiencing through this mind and body, we are able to reconnect to our essence, our spirit, our pure conscious awareness as our true state of being instead of the false state of being, that which we believe we are as far as a physical body and a mind. So let's look at some of these things. If we look at things like authentic mindfulness, not just making up your own definition of mindfulness, but the specific formal practices of mindfulness. This is an example of one higher state of consciousness. The ability to live in the state of appreciation is another example of a higher state of consciousness. As is living with the constant state of unconditional love in your open heart. A higher state of consciousness is when we have silenced the mind and the ego and we have reconnected to our own essence, our pure conscious awareness, that which we truly are. No longer deceived by the ego as to our true nature, our true self. It is from this vantage point that we see truth and it's from here this platform that we've created of spirituality that we start to live a fully engaged life so the idea of spirituality is to engage in meditative practices or meditation itself in order to rise into these higher states of consciousness. And once we get a little higher, we remain vigilant and continue the practices so then we can attain a higher state and a higher state and a higher state, getting us ever closer to that highest state of pure conscious awareness, which we truly are. This is the reconnecting process that we go through. A lot of times people will say we have to remember. Yes, this is how you do it. Reconnecting, remembering, whatever you want to call it. This is the path to accomplish that. So let's continue exploring this a little bit just so we can offer more clarification for you. True spirituality leads us to higher states of consciousness, higher states of awareness, a higher state of being. Now, there is a lot of spirituality out there that's New Age fluff, and it is incapable of accomplishing this. This is what we have to come to understand. Most of the things that we've been led to believe as being spiritual, especially here in the West, has nothing to do with real spirituality. Do crystals, tarot cards, spirit guides, charms, seeking the advice of palm readers or essential oils have the ability to take you into higher states of consciousness? Of course, as you well know, the answer is beyond obvious. Of course not. No, none of that has anything to do with taking you to a higher state of consciousness. Therefore, it is not true spirituality. Now, if that's something you enjoy and you want to spend your hard-earned money on it and spend your time and energy on it, that's fine. Understand it for what it is. Is it fun? I don't know. I don't engage in any of that stuff. But if you find it fun, then fine. Uh, Have fun with it. But understand it is not spiritual and it is not ever going to help you attain higher states of consciousness. Take a moment to consider this and the implications that it holds, because this is the stuff that passes for spirituality here in the West today. The next time you're tempted by a fun-sounding practice or something that a New Age guru is pushing or your own ego is telling you is your real authentic path, ask yourself this question. 
can this practice or thing possibly result in me attaining real, not just perceived, real higher states of consciousness? If the answer is no, then why would you waste your time and money on it? Spirituality has many paths, it's true, but we must be wise enough to distinguish the true paths from the fake and false ones. So many people get sucked into this false path and they don't know any better and they end up wasting precious time, energy, and even money on such things and they get nowhere. They just fall deeper into a mental delusion. This is not healthy. Another false spiritual path is that of drugs. And we have to include this because in the West, the drug culture has gotten so strong and unfortunately has been identified with spirituality when nothing could be further from the truth. Don't confuse this That is a mental trip of altered brain chemistry caused by artificial means as a real experience. Remember that spirituality, true spirituality, relies on experiential practices. Altering your brain chemistry and just sitting there does not offer a real experience. It's fake. What one experiences while under the influence of under the influence of drugs is not an actual real experience. It's a fake experience induced by the chemicals being altered in the brain. In other words, it's simply not real. It didn't happen. Only in your mind, only in your head. Okay? Drugs do not allow you to access higher states of consciousness. Now, I know everybody says, oh, well, we can look at most ancient cultures and the shamans and everything had this, you know, they smoked this or they drank this or whatever, and it made them more open. It made them more susceptible to the spirits and to knowing things. Yeah, sorry, I have to kind of call BS on the vast majority of that, if not all of it. Um, If a shaman was truly powerful, they would not need to rely on artificial means. How do I know this? Because all the information is available to them. It's right there in the field because the information is contained within the energy, and the energy is this field around us, this universal field. All of the information is there. See, this is what their job truly was, was to access that and to get the information or to try and influence it if that's what they were going to try and do. And you can, but you don't need artificial means to get there unless you are unskilled. And then by taking those artificial means, you don't have a true experience. It's made up in your mind. Marijuana, LSD, acid, mushrooms, you name it, all that garbage. None of it has anything to do with spirituality. But yet, you can't go into a store that's spiritually based without seeing the marijuana leaf. Now, don't get me wrong. I support CBD oil. Hey, that hemp oil is a, a healing agent. I'm fully for anything natural that will allow us to heal and be healthy and have a great life. But recreational drugs being associated with spirituality is a false path. It is these recreational drugs that actually serve to inhibit true spirituality just as many prescription medications do, especially the psychotropic drugs. Anything that alters your brain chemistry places you in an unnatural state. How can you attain a higher state of consciousness when you are in an unnatural state? The answer is simple. You can't. These altered states of mind, these altered mental states, are not higher states of consciousness. This distinction must be grasped. See, so when we're living a fully engaged life, we don't need things like recreational drugs. 
See, this is the difference. This is what they truly meant about being high on life. We're talking about the high vibration. We're talking about the higher state of consciousness. That's what it is to be high on life, not something caused by a, a drug, not some artificial means. See, we literally, literally, vibrationally become higher. Our vibrational frequency is higher. Our state of consciousness is higher. This is what it truly meant to be high, not the drug culture's reference to it. And again, if that's something you want to do, have at it. I don't care. I'm not standing in judgment. I'm just saying, know the difference between spirituality and some drug-induced trip. And stop trying to pass off a drug-induced trip as a sense of awakening, as a minor awakening, as a way to be in a higher state of consciousness. You are not in a higher state of consciousness. You are in a drug-induced state. There's a difference. It's time we stop fooling ourselves. We've got to get mature people. We have to be able to understand what is reality. We have to, to separate from the ego. We have to separate from all this fake, false stuff that's been shoved in front of us. We have to look at things more realistically, in a practical manner, and with a sense of maturity. If we ever hope to attain a state of higher consciousness, if we hope to awaken, this is what is required. So, I've indicated a couple of the false paths. It's up to you to seek a true path. I am doing my very best to offer that to all of you, to give you a true path with authentic practices, without the dogma. This is a way spirituality was originally meant to be. It was meant to provide you with authentic practices that work, that have the ability to guide you to higher states of consciousness, and at the same time, allow you to engage the practice and to have your own experience with it. And that, my friends, is real, true spirituality. So here's a test. I put out the Appreciation Mastery Program. Those of you that have it can ask yourself a question. Those of you who haven't gotten it yet, what are you waiting for? Jump over to the website right now, www.expansionmastery.com, and grab it. Come on. The thing's really affordable for the amount of incredible wisdom and authentic practices that I included. It's a steal. It's amazing. So, for those of you who are in the know and you've got the Appreciation Mastery Program, as you go through there, as I give you those things, ask yourself, will any of these have the ability to take me to a higher state of consciousness? You will have to answer yes, because I designed it that way. That is the way it was meant to be shared. If you go through the challenges, right, the various practices in my book, Expansion Mastery, you can ask yourself the same thing. There are practices there to help you get healthier, to invigorate your life force energy, things like that. And then there are things that are specifically designed to help you to reach higher states of consciousness. That's what it's about. The trinity in the book is about making sure we have a healthy mind, a healthy body, and then we reconnect to the spirit, to our essence, to our true self. Now, I was going to end the sale on my book, but because this previous weekend was a holiday, I will extend it. So remember, you can go to www.expansionmastery.com. You can get your signed copy of Expansion Mastery, The Practical Guide to Living a Fully Engaged Life, for merely 5 bucks. Just enter the discount code you'll find on the website. It is Heaven on Earth, all one word. All the details are on the website. You can check it out. Just go there. You'll automatically get your 75% savings. Five bucks on the book. It is incredible. And you can pick up the awesome Appreciation Mastery Program and the absolutely critical Breath Bridge Program while you're at it. 
Please make sure and share this podcast. Get it out to as many people as you know. Help them get on the path to true, real, authentic spirituality. Let's do our part to help everyone mature and to awaken, to shift into these higher states of consciousness. Let's do our part. Share this. Make sure to support us on social media, Facebook, Twitter. Uh, Share my YouTube channel. Subscribe to it, all that stuff. You know what you're doing. Uh, I apologize. I haven't gotten to posting more content on there. I've been extremely busy with some projects right now, but I promise you I'm getting to it, and uh, there will be some new video content on the YouTube channel, so be ready for that. Until next time, my friends, I hope you had a wonderful holiday weekend. I hope you experienced life to the fullest, and I wish you the very best in all of your practices and your life. Take care.